Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Andrew Horn. He is a social entrepreneur who has founded four different organizations or businesses. He's here to talk a little bit about his entrepreneurial journey, as well as give us some advice about how to turn your dream into an actual business. And Andrew, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Let's start with your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, It started with an organization called Dreams for Kids, and uh, ultimately, you are now kind of the digital hallmark. Explain your entrepreneurial path. No, I actually went to uh, Virginia Tech, only a few hours outside of uh, the district. And uh, when I was getting ready to graduate, I was uh, ready for a career in hospitality. Uh, and then I really had this kind of like revelatory moment where I was just starting to ask myself some of the important questions. You know, what is my purpose? What really makes me excited? What am I passionate about? And the only thing I really knew about a few weeks before graduation is that I was not passionate about hospitality. I actually decided to go on this uh, journey inspired by the book uh, Into the Wild by John Krakauer about a recent grad who basically uh, gives away all of his possessions and drives to Alaska to uncover his purpose. And just so happened that my father was moving to Alaska. So I took off on this cross-country voyage with him rather than, uh, you know, jumping headfirst into the hospitality industry after graduation. And uh, it was really on that trip that my dad asked me this one question. He said, what's the last thing you've done that you're proud of? And my immediate reaction was that I really didn't have anything that I was proud of. And as I looked deeper into my professional work and uh, just what I'd been doing with my time, the first thing that I was able to come up with was actually a few years before where I, uh, I volunteered with this nonprofit organization in Chicago that helped young people with disabilities to play sports. And when I thought back to, you know, several years before when I was doing this work, I was planning fundraisers, raising money, actually volunteering with the young people. Uh, I was still fulfilled. I had this sense of fulfillment and, and pride from that work. And so that's really what led me on my, my social entrepreneurship journey, if you will, was just this really kind of innate understanding that helping other people really brought me joy and fulfilled me. And so I just started doing as much of that as possible, started volunteering, and then realized this opportunity to introduce adaptive athletics in this new way in uh, the District of Columbia and the surrounding areas. And, uh, you know, we've just been trying to solve problems ever since. We're talking with Andrew Horn. Uh, The organization he referred to there was called Dreams for Kids, and then another one along the same lines called the Ability List. And before we get uh, to more of the the regular business ventures that followed that, uh, Andrew, you you brought up an interesting point there about people who want to turn their dreams into reality, and perhaps your your dad's really the one who, who put the finger on the pulse there, and that's the importance of having a passion for what you're doing. Yeah, I completely agree because, you know, the reality of, of entrepreneurship and really anything in life is that the things that you look back on with the most uh, pride and, and sense of fulfillment are going to be the things that you really work for. And, you know, for me, at least my, my entire life and through college, I always felt like I was lazy and I, I really had trouble finding any sense of motivation. And so for me, you know, finding this kind of like internal passion and, and sense of purpose was essential for me to create anything of value. Uh, because without that, I just couldn't motivate. I couldn't, you know, work the late hours. I couldn't really do great work. And so for me, you know, I think that everything starts from there is really understanding, you know, what, what ignites the fire in your belly, what actually excites you. Because if you don't identify that, ultimately, it's going to be very difficult to, to put in the work and the effort that it takes to require uh, anything really extraordinary. So that's, that's really, you know, the, the starting point that I always come back to and, and advocate when, uh, when people are kind of trying to take this step from uh, turning a dream into, into their reality, into their career. Two of the later businesses you started, one was the Intrigue Agency and now Tribute, was is where you're at now. Uh, talk about the ideas that led to those being created. The Intrigue Agency was really just a, a branding firm that was focused around our idea that, uh, you know, oftentimes we spend hours, days, weeks, months, even years kind of building our businesses and that oftentimes kind of these crucial moments, uh, whether someone's going to invest in us, whether someone's going to partner with us, comes down to a single conversation or a single pitch. And so really what we focused on is helping people articulate the value of their idea, product, or service in a really concise, pithy package. So we worked with Fortune 500 CEOs on TED Talks. We worked with, you know, high-growth startups and actually kind of articulating their message in uh, pitch decks. So did that for many years. And then uh, about two years ago, I got a gift that uh, that really changed my life. My girlfriend, uh, for my 26th birthday, decided to send an email out to uh, 
20 of my closest friends. And she said, I want you to submit a one minute video telling Andrew why you love him. And so she collected all those videos. She put them in one montage. And when I got home that night, she surprised me with the video. And I was just in the back of the room bawling my eyes out because I was so overwhelmed with everything that my friends were saying. And then I, I came out of that and I said, how did you do this? And her reaction was, well, it sucked. And she said she had to send out hundreds of emails. She had to collect about, like videos through Dropbox Drive, text message, and she had to edit it together in iMovie. So that was a light bulb moment is that I received this gift that was, was truly the most meaningful gift I'd ever received. And I immediately identified this problem that the only reason more people weren't receiving them is because of how difficult it was to create. So we launched this company, Tribute, which basically is the uh, best collaborative video editor on the web, and we think it's the easiest way to build one of these group video montages of your friends and family telling someone exactly why you love them. Uh, and we're really, really excited about it, and the, the true vision is really to leverage video to help people articulate these heartfelt, authentic messages, telling the people they care about, why they appreciate them, why they're still around to really benefit from it. And what were... Any challenges in, in getting it up and running? Obviously, there was trying to get that clunky technology into a very usable form of technology. But then there's also, uh, you know, the fundraising, the marketing and, and the branding, which I guess you were already an expert in given your previous work. But talk about some of the, the hurdles and the, the high and the low points in, in getting this off the ground. You know, I think one of the big shifts for me and, and a, a big issue that I think a lot of entrepreneurs face these days is when it comes to investment, uh, you know, for me, I, I would uh, I would articulate and like, characterize myself as a fairly empathetic, like kind human being. I'm very sympathetic to the emotions of others and, uh, you know, I always want to be conscious of how they're feeling. And I think one of the things that I realized as I was going out for investment is that I was always very kind and sympathetic as I was reaching out to people, being conscious of their time, thanking them for reaching out asking them if they'd like to be involved. But that what I found with investors and what really got them to be more receptive was really owning that this business is going to be a reality, is that if you go into business meetings with investors, you know, you need to have what, what a lot of people call the aura of inevitability, which is that if you don't believe in your gut that your business is going to be successful, there's going to be a hit, there's going to be a win for them, don't go into that meeting. Is that, and you have to talk about your business. You have to be able to articulate the financial solvency in such a way on paper that you can go into a meeting and say, this is going to work. This is going to have an impact. And it really is a shift of asking people to invest to inviting them to join you. And that's really the way that I think you want to come across in all messaging as it comes to investment is that this is going to happen. We're building a team to do this. We're going to make a lot of money. We're going to change the world. And if you'd like to join us, we'd be happy to welcome you to our team is that when people kind of like hear that and they feel that in investors or in entrepreneurs, excuse me, I think that that's what gets them really excited. And that was an important shift for us early on. Andrew, obviously, whether it's the business world or, or elsewhere, we see it a lot in movies now. Mimicry is uh, kind of uh, very popular. That's why we see so many sequels, because it's already been proven successful in one form or sure. another. And so now that uh, you have uh, pioneered this sort of business, I'm sure you're running into some competitors or will soon, uh, as long as you stay successful. So what do you do to uh, stay ahead of the, of, of the pack here? Yeah, that's an important question. And I think especially with technology, you know, one of the questions that you're inevitably going to get from, from most of your investors is how are you defensible from someone else coming into the space? Because you're always going to have, I think one of the things we realized early on is that your competitors are not only the people trying to do what you're trying to do, but they're the people who can do what you want to do easily. So that means that let's say that a Yahoo or a Google wants to get into the collaborative video space. They obviously have the resources to build a really beautiful collaborative video editor. And so I think that ultimately for us, what we always talk about with our investors and even with our community is how we're going to be different is by articulating a message and brand that is completely unique. And so where uh, Google or Facebook may come in and build a collaborative video editor, they're not going to build a brand that's focused on uh, gratitude and appreciation and helping people share heartfelt messages so they can connect deeper in their relationships. So I think that What's really important is to distinguish yourself on a branding standpoint, and that comes down to really understanding what you stand for and really designing and messaging so that every person who touches your brand understands that. 
so that uh, that's one thing that we've really said is that some other people may come in and build this technology, but ultimately we are going to be the best at connecting people to this elevated form of communication and lifestyle and helping them to truly deepen the relationships they have with the people they care about. And because some of those larger technology companies that may, may come in, they're not going to be able to say that because that's not cohesive with this massive conglomerate kind of utility brand that they, that they are. And so that's kind of how I, I really look at defensibility in this day and age is that a lot of it just comes down to branding. Andrew, it's been a fascinating uh, entrepreneurial path and really you're just getting started here. So we look forward to seeing uh, how things uh, go for you over the years. But I think a lot of folks have learned uh, some great advice from you. And of course, I'm sure they got a smile on their face given the work that you do, uh, making people's days brighter through the business that you currently run. So thank you very much for your time today and continued success to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us. And if anyone wants to check out Tribute, just go ahead and uh, visit our website, www.tribute.co. And we're at Twitter at WeTribute. And we'd love to get you guys on the site and help you start sharing some love with the people you care most about. Fantastic. Tribute.co at WeTribute on Twitter is how you can find out more about Andrew's business. Andrew Horn, social entrepreneur and founder of Tribute. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.